Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Dan and today I'm going to be going over 10 sleeper OP builds that you have to try out in patch 10.1. This patch is the very first one of season 10, which means that it's the perfect time to start practicing these builds and get them ready for ranked. And also guys, today's question of the day is how did your placement matches go? Let us know how many you won and lost in the comments down below. And one last thing, are you getting ganked in your own lane? Constantly getting demolished? Don't worry, we got you covered. Whether you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Night Blue, Bunny Foo Foo, Box Box, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides, so what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and start improving right now. All right, with all that being said, let's jump into the video. Starting off the list at number 10, we have a build for Zach Top. And yeah, you heard that right. Instead of being played in the jungle, Zach is currently rising in popularity for the top lane. A lot of notable pro players all around the world have caught on to this hidden OP build and are abusing him for some free wins. And since this is a playstyle you don't see often, most players will have no idea how to lane versus him and will be caught off guard by just how powerful this build is. For runes, you'll go Conqueror, Triumph, Legend, Tenacity, and Last Stand, followed by Resolve Secondary for second win and Revitalize. When it comes to items, there are two different builds for him, which are Full Tank or AP Bruiser. For the Full Tank build, you'll go Sunfire Cape into Spirit Visage, Merc Treads, Thorn Mail, Adaptive Helm, and a Warmox. And for the AP Bruiser build, you'll get Spirit Visage into Leandries, Morello, Merc Treads, Zanyas, and a Spellbinder. Both of these builds are extremely powerful and heavily underused. Combining Conqueror with his passive Blob Healing pretty much makes him unkillable against meta tanks and bruisers. Also, note that Zach's blobs from his ultimate did receive a huge buff a couple patches ago, so make sure to give this build a try. Next up, at number 9, we got a build for Orianna mid lane. Recently, pro mid laners have been spamming a new build with her which involves skipping Luden's Echo and building Hextech GLP instead. The reason behind this is because the GLP active guarantees that Orianna hits her full combo. In addition to that, GLP is about 400 gold cheaper, but provides almost the exact same stats as Ludens does. For runes, you can go either Spellbook, Summon Airy, or Phase Rush, depending on personal preference. However, our analysts recommend that you stick to Spellbook, Free Boots, Biscuits, and Time Warp Tonic, followed by Sorcery Secondary for Mana Flow Band and Transcendence. And for items, you should rush a Hextech GLP into Sork Boots, Leandries, Deathcap, Void Staff, and Azania's Hourglass. I absolutely love this build, and I've started using GLP on other champions as well because the item is Sleeper OP. Coming in at number 8, we got a new build for Shin Zhao. Whenever you see Shin being played in the jungle, he's usually opting for Hail of Blades, Press the Attack, or Conquer. However, there's been a new build that's been seeing a bit more play amongst Korean junglers, which is Omnistone. You might be a little skeptical about this build at first, but a lot of unexpected runes like Fleet, Glacial Augment, Predator, Dark Harvest, Electrocute, Comet, and Aftershock feel really good on him. I was quite surprised at how effective this rune is because of the number of buffs it received in the past few weeks. For runes, you'll go Omnistone, Hexflash, Biscuits, Cosmic Insight, followed by Sorcery Second for Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking. The reason why you take Hexflash instead of the standard stopwatch or free boots is because of the synergy it has with your ganks. You can Hexflash over walls to then be in range of your E to set up free kills or just get in a position for tower dives. Next up at number 7, we have a bot lane duo build for Varus ADC and Nami support. For those who are unaware, Nami received a huge buff at the start of patch 10.1, which allows her E to now proc on spells as well as auto attacks. Thanks to this buff, it's opened up a lot of different options for the bot lane. One notable duo that almost nobody uses at the moment is Full Lethality Varus combined with Nami. This combo is perfect because Lethality Varus also received a huge buff at the start of this patch and the two together are feeling really strong. Whenever you land one CC ability on the enemy ADC, they're as good as dead because of your burst. On top of that, you even have a solid CC chain combo and a ton of poke. For Varus, you'll go Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and Scorch, followed by Inspiration Second for Free Boots and Cosmic Insight. For items, you'll rush a Dusk Blade, Berserker Greaves, Yomu's, Edge of Night, Mortal Reminder, and a GA. And for Nami, you'll go Guardian, Font of Life, Second Wind, Revitalize, followed by Inspiration Second for Perfect Timing and Biscuits. Then for items, you'll purchase the Spell Thieves into Moby Boots, Arden, Athenes, Redemption, and a Mikhail's. Coming in at number 6, we have the build for Kled Jungle. This build has been seeing a lot of play from one of the best, if not the best jungler in the world, Griffin's Tarzan. He's recently been spamming Kled Jungle in solo queue as a counter to the most popular pick, Lee Sin. Kled's early dueling potential is almost unrivaled in the jungle, and his early ganks are surprisingly pretty good. 
In addition to that, his counter jungling is really effective, and his clear speed is decent. For runes, you'll go Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand with Domination Second for Sudden Impact and Ravenous Hunter. For items, you'll purchase a Red Smite Warriors, Ninja Tabby, Umbral Glaive, Edge of Night, GA, and a Maw of Malmordius. This lethality style is so strong if you manage to get ahead early. With this playstyle, you want to be really aggressive, invade the enemy jungler when you have a lead, and force a lot of ganks and tower dives. Next up at number 5, we have another Omnistone build, except it's for Gnar Top. Gnar is kinda in an awkward spot at the moment because it doesn't really feel like any of the runes are perfect for him. Sure, things like Conqueror and Fleet feel pretty good, but there's nothing that's solidified as the absolute best. This is mainly due to his playstyle of changing between a ranged lane bully slash DPS champion to a full engaged tank. However, Korean top laners have found a solution to this, and are taking Omnistone on him instead. The way Omnistone works is that you'll receive specific runes more often when you are in specific scenarios. For example, if you're playing as mini Nar, then you will never receive Aftershock, but are more likely to get things like Conqueror or Hail of Blades. Due to this RNG bias that Omnistone provides, it synergizes very well with Nar's two drastically different playstyles. If you main top lane, then we suggest you give this build a try because it's actually a ton of fun. Coming in at number 4, we have a build for Aurelia in a solo lane. So this build was seen at the start of the preseason, but has died down tremendously due to the many nerfs on Sanguine Blade. However, there are still pro players who are using this item on her and believe that it's still very strong. For runes, you'll go the standard Conqueror, Triumph, Bloodline, Coup de Gras, followed by Inspiration Second for Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic. However, for items you won't purchase a Tiamat, and instead just rush a Triforce into Sanguine Blade, Merc Treads, GA, Sterics, and a Wit's End. This is a very situational build that you should not blindly opt into every game. In fact, most games you should be purchasing a Tiamat instead of Sanguine, but there are specific scenarios where Sanguine might be better. We mostly see this build being used against squishy mages like Syndra, Orianna, and Vagar. As soon as you get Sanguine and have your ultimate, you can 100-0 them any time as long as you land your abilities. So once again, don't blindly opt into this build. Try it out in normal games first and figure out which matchups you prefer this in before jumping into ranked. Next up at number 3, we got a Lee Sin jungle build. One of Lee Sin's greatest weaknesses is his lack of vision control. Since he's a champion who heavily relies on his yellow trinkets, he has a lot of trouble clearing enemy wards. However, for patch 10.1, a lot of Lee Sin mains have been opting to go Umbral Glaive as their second item instead of the traditional Black Cleaver. The reason why this build is so effective is because it covers one of Lee's greatest weaknesses while being dirt cheap and synergizing with his strengths. For runes, you'll go Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand, followed by Domination Second for Zombie Ward and Relentless Hunter. For items, you'll get Blue Smite Warrior, Ninja Tabby, Umbral Glaive, Black Cleaver, and GA. You should leave the last item slot empty for Pink Wards, and later sell the Umbral Glaive for Maw of Malmordius if you have to. One of our analysts has been maining Lee Sin since Season 3, and he's addicted to this build. The quick power spike from Umbral Glaive is super efficient, and allows you to one-shot any Squisher member with ease. At number 2, we have another Nami Support Duo build. Once again, Nami received a buff which allows her Eden out proc on allied spells as well as auto attacks. One non-mainstream bot lane champion who's really effective with this buff is Syndra. One of Syndra's main weaknesses is that it's really predictable when she's going to use her E or W. However, one of her greatest strengths is how hard it is to predict her Qs. So if you combine the slow from Nami's E with the Syndra Qs, then you'll pretty much be able to guarantee a full combo. Also, one unique part about Syndra's kit is that she also acts as a support in the sense that she can peel against engaged champions. For runes, you'll go Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, followed by Sorcery Second for Mana Flow Band and Transcendence. For items, you'll go Hextech GLP, Sork Boots, Morello, Death Gap, Void Staff, and Azanias. The Hextech GLP synergizes really well with the playstyle of this bot lane duo and helps you secure even more kills. Once you slow them with the active, you can land your full combo with Nami's full combo and empowered E spells to one shot the enemy bot lane. And lastly, at number one, we have a build for the newly reworked Silas. Since his playstyle has been changed into a burst mage, a lot of pro players have been testing the waters with new builds for him. However, one that really stood out to us is a new build which brings him back into the jungle. Although he did lose his auto reset abilities this patch, he was compensated with 3 stacks of his passive and 60% attack speed when he has them up. So at the moment, he's way better in the jungle than the previous iteration of Silas from patch 9.24. For runes, you'll go Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, followed by Inspiration for Boots and Cosmic Insight. Then for items, you'll get Red Smite, Runic Echoes, into Proto Belt, Sork Boots, Rylai's, Leandries, and Azanias. 
There are also a ton of other builds from in the jungle, some of which involve Hail of Blaze and Gunblade, and others that go Omnistone or even Dark Harvest. We'll make sure to keep you guys updated with all the best Silas builds, so click that sub button if you want to stay notified. And that's going to be it for our 10 Sleeper OP builds for patch 10.1. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please hit that like, comment, and subscribe button to be notified of our next vid. Also, make sure to check out ProGuys.com if you want to see huge improvements in your rank. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you out on the Rift.